Hello everyone. In this lecture, we'll discuss about the embryology of the ear. So you all can see that these are the three morphological divisions of the ear, external, middle, and inter inner ear. Uh, each one having separate uh, developmental origin embryology, uh, which we'll discuss in the coming slides. So uh, we all know that hmm. we all know that development of many structures, head and neck, is intimately related to brachial or pharyngeal arches. We know this fact very well. In the embryo, at around four to five weeks of gestation, mesenchyme surrounding the pharynx, five or six parallel thickening, develop at, as a bands called pharyngeal arches. These are one to five in number from head to tail, uh, head to tail from anterior to somites. Uh, the uh, uh, groove developed between each, a uh, groove developed between each uh, brachial arch, which is called cleft on external surface and pouch on the inner uh, pharyngeal surface. In each brachial arch, through, there develops a bar of cartilage, a group of muscles, associated artery and cranular. So this is common with all the brachial arches. So coming to the pharyngeal arches, this photograph clearly shows the pharyngeal arches. You can show that this is the cleft, this is pouch one, this is second, this is third, this is fourth. And in this pharyngeal pouch, endodermic pithrium artery. So external layer, how external layer uh, or pinna is developed? We'll discuss that. This is from eight hillocks. So development of pinna, it starts as fourth week. This is important. It starts as fourth week as tissue condensation of mandibular and higher arches as distal portion of the first brachial groups. Within two weeks, six ridges form, which is called as hillocks of his after the scientist his who have discovered it, who have named the discovered it, recognized it, hypothesized he locks, fuse into the anterior fold of mandibular arch origin and a posterior fold of higher arch origin oriented above the first brachial groove. Adult configuration achieved by the fifth month. Remember this. So fourth week is starts, adult configuration achieved, achieved by fifth month. So at approximately seven weeks, the six hillocks are fusing with two folds which later fuse separately. So triggers an anterior external uh, Auditory canal developed from first arch. Rest of the pinna developed from second arch. So remember that. Tragus and anterior external auditory canal developed from first arch. Rest of the pinna developed from second arch. Other studies, balanced participation of some studies claim that there is balanced participation of the first and second arch. The hillocks fuse into anterior fold of mandibular arch origin and the posterior fold of higher arch origin oriented above the first brachial groove. Uh, the folds unite at the upper end of this group. Anomalies. So what are the anomalies? So this is very important. In embryology, we have to re read the normal embryology of that organ as well as anomaly. Because to understand anomaly, it is very important to understand the embryology of that organ. So anomalies. We have anosia. What do we mean by anosia? Complete absence of pineal level. Microsia means it's smaller. It has four grades well discussed. Macrosia. Bat ear. Abnormally protruding ear. This is Amir Khan's ear. The conca is large with poorly developed uh, bat ear. This is very important. Uh, it becomes very uh, difficult diagnosis uh, is, uh, to whether it is post-auricular hematoma because of post-auricular hematoma also we develop sometimes the pinna appears protruding. But this, the conca is large with poorly developed antihelix and scaphoid. This is very important features. Loop, cup, or constrict area. Hyperplasia of upper third of the auricle, upper uh, portion of the helix or pinna is folded. Crypto, uh, cryptosia. This is very important. Uh, I recently, I have seen one case of cryptosia in myopathy. Upper third of auricle is embedded into the scalp skin. Coloboma, transverse cleft in the pinna in the middle. Polyostria or mirror ear. Accessory ear that is large enough to resemble an additional pinna. So you all gather. This is anosia. This is anosia. No ear. This is microsia. Grade 2 microsia. This is bat ear. We all know that this is bat ear. This is bat ear. Uh, this is cup here. This is crypto uh, cryptosia. You can see that this is this fold is uh, uh, this is coloboma. This is polyosia. This is another pinna. This is another pinna. For uh, preauricular sinus. So what do you mean by preauricular sinus? So depression in the front of the crust of the helix or ever uh, 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 preauricular sinus depressions in the front of the crust of helix or ever tragus. It is an epithelial tract due to incomplete fusion of the tubercles. So preauricular tag or appendages, uh, preauricular tag or appendage, skin cover tags that appears in the line drawn from. So it appears in the line drawn from tragus to angle of mouth. They may contain a small pieces of the cartilage. So, 
these are the Darwin's tubercle. This is tells here. So what do we mean by Darwin's tubercle? Actually, this comes in spots in DNB exam. Darwin's tubercle. Pointed tubercle on the upper part of the helix and represents the apex of the pinna in lower animals. Stalls here, what do you mean by stalls here? Which is uh, a helix which should normally be folded is flat and the upper crust of the anti helix is duplicated. External auditory canal. External auditory canal. So, development of the cartilages path is complete at birth, whereas the bony part is only partially complete at birth. So, development of cartilaginous part is complete at birth, whereas the bony part is only partially complete at birth and continues to grow in the. Uh, so, cartil uh, cartilage part is. Uh, complete at birth, but the bony part is only partially complete at birth and continues to grow in the postnatal period. Where uh, this is cartilage is the bone. Here. The external auditory canal develops from first brachial cleft, which is like the external auditory canal develops from first brachial cleft, which is lined by the ectoderm. This is the first brachial arch. This is second brachial arch. This is dorsal part of the first brachial cleft around which develops the auricle. So, First brachial cleft, this is first brachial cleft, cleft is gadda and pouch is a form of pouch, first brachial pouch. During the second month, the ectoderm of the first pharyngeal cleft, remember this, ectoderm of the first pharyngeal cleft briefly abuts on the endoderm of the first pharyngeal uh, pouch. So there is a proliferation of surrounding mesodermal tissue which breaks the contact between the two. Shortly thereafter, at the beginning of the eight weeks, the brachial cleft starts growing deeper into the mesodermal tissue again to form the primary AC, which corresponds to the fibrocartilaginous canal of the adult. In the next week of development, the ectoderm uh, lining of the pri uh, primitive EAC proliferates to form a cord of epithelial cells towards the first pharyngeal pouch to form what is called epithelial plug solid metal plug. The deepest part of the cells in the epithelial plug, the deepest part of the cells in the form the uh, thickening called a meatal plate. You can see this This is meatal plate, this is meatal plate, this is epithelial plug, and this intervening mesenchymal cells. So, the deepest uh, part of the cells in the epithelial plug form a thickening called a meatal plate and grow into the mesenchyme, which is adjacent to it. The mesenchyme cells just adjacent to the mesenchyme cells just adjacent to the meatal plate forms the lamina propria or the middle. Uh, here, remember this the meatal, uh, the mesenchymal cells just adjacent to the meatal plate forms the lamina propria or the middle fibrous layer of the tympanic membrane. So the bony AC is a part of the temporal one, which is uh, which is at the which is at the end of the fetal life is made up of three principal components: the uh, squamous part. You can say this is squamous part. This is petrosquamous, petromastoid, why petrous rocks. It looks like that, and this is tympanic. You all know that. Okay. So while the development of epithelial plug, this is epithelial plug. This is epithelial plug. This is epithelial plug. This is meatal plug. So while the development of the epithelial plug and the meatal pl uh, plate is taking place, development of the squamous part of the temporal bone also takes place by the appearance of fossification centers in the mesoderm surrounding the de uh, developing tympanic membrane at the ninth week. So similar, so similar ossification centers develop for the tympanic ring, which undergoes a circumferential fusion process. However, a defect is left superiorly, which corresponds to this is important. The ossification center is famous for example, these all things are defect. Uh -huh. Similar ossification uh, centers develop for the tympanic ring, which undergoes a circumferential fusion process. However, a defect is left superiorly. Remember this defect is left superiorly, which corresponds to the notch of the rivenous in the full term. This occurs by 10th week. This occurs by 10th week. So, canalizations of the epithelial cord start the fifth month of the fetus. It starts from its deeper end. It starts from its deeper end to the outer end and is completed by seven months to form the bony AC. So seven months, bony AC. Eventually, it breaks down to communicate with the conchal depressions. The cells which lie at the deepest form the superficial epithelial layer of the membrane. The cells which are on the sides form the squamous epithelial layer of the extraordinary canal. So coming to the tympanic membrane. What is tympanic membrane and what is sparse? Tympanic membrane is formed by all the germinal layer, which begins by the fourth week. Endothelium of the pharyngeal pouch forms the 
endothelium of the pharyngeal pouch forms the inner layer of the tympanic membrane endoderm so uh, this is middle layer this is external costumer so this is endoderm mesodermacular we have said that okay, this this is formed by all the three germ layers so mesenchyme adjacent to epithelium form the middle fibrous layer of the tympanic membrane this is uh, root of roof of external artery canal. This is famous part of the temporal bone. This epithelial cord of cells defect in the uh, tympanic ring, uh, not of redness. Petrobestrate part uh, for tympanic ring begins to extend laterally. While changes are taking place in the epithelial cord of cells, bone growth around the tympanic ring forming its fusion to, uh, to petrous bone uh, proceeds laterally around the circumference. The squamous part of the temporal bone extends laterally as it does the tympanic ring. The squamous part of the, the defect in tympanic ring, petromestroid part, and this tympanic ring extending laterally. While the tympanic ring extend laterally, so does the squamous part of the temporal bone. While the tympanic ring extends laterally, so does the squamous part of the temporal bone. This is right temporal bone. This is posterior part of the anterior. This is not of ravenous. You can see that this is not of ravenous. This is EAC. This is foramen hushka. And on the temporal bone, uh, this is left temporal bone, this is anterior nodular provenance. This is foramen of hushka. This is posterior nodular provenance. So at birth, the tympanic ring is U-shaped structure. The lateral extension of the tympanic ring results to form the results to form the growth of two tympanic tubercles, one from the anterior aspects of the ring and the second from the posterior aspect. This is right temporal bone at one year postnatal. This is foramen of Hashka. You can see this. Left temporal bone. Uh, left temporal bone of the neonate, anterior nodular providence, adult external artery canal, posterior nodular eminence, foramen of Hashka. By the end of the First postnatal year, these projections grow laterally towards each other to form the inferior wall of EAC. By doing so, these projections generate two opening, not of resonance superiority and foramen of Hushka inferiority. So the adult configuration of bony EAC is obtained at nine years of age. The adult configurations of bony EAC obtained at nine years of age. The foramen of Hushka closes uh, closes by five years, but in seven percent of adult remains patterned. In such cases, the skin of EAC may invaginate into the residual foramen and migrate under under the inferior wall of EAC to form the canal cholesteatoma. The patent the patent foramen of Hushka has been reported as a cause of Persistent year discharge following investigation due to the patent, the patent for amenas. Okay, the foramen of Hushka closes by five years, then, but in seven percent of adults, it remains patent. In such cases, the skin of EAC may invaginate into the residual foramen and migrate under the inferior wall of EAC. Patent, patent for amenas of Hushka has been reported as a cause of the persistent ear discharge following investigations due to connections with TMJ or fistula with a parodigal. This is not of revenues. This is tympanoscomous suture. This is tympanomastoid suture. This is tympanic ring. So what is this? At birth, tympanic membrane is almost lying in a horizontal plane. As the tympanic ring changes orientation, the caudal sulcus is pushed laterally and TM becomes more vertical. Adult configurations by five years. The lateral growth of the tympanic ring carries the tympanic membrane from the nearly horizontal position of the neonate to the adult angulation by four or five years. Coming to the anomalies of the extra anomalies of the external auditory canal, there can be atresia of the external auditory canal, which is common with the grade four microtia or grade three colloral fistula. This is colloral fistula. You can see this middle ear, uh, middle ear is sensitive and mastoid antrum. I guess we can continue uh, this lecture in the second part in the part two embryology. Till then, happy reading.